Do you feel like now that if God would review your life these last nine and a half years, the last year since 1985 even, um, that you would be a disappointment to him no. again? No. Um, I don't want to sound presumptuous. Uh, I haven't done a perfect job. I've made a lot of mistakes. There's a few things I'd be embarrassed about. You're still making a few mistakes then. Yeah, yeah. I, I ain't no saint. <laughs> but um, I feel like, see, all it's God asks of us, I know this absolutely, God asks, just do our best. Not, God's not saying be perfect, change the world, you know, just do your best. And God knows that I've done that. And so all it's I need to hear from Jesus is, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Not, you've been a success, not, wow, you know, you really had a big impact or anything. Well, I was faithful and I did my best. That's all he wants from us. What would you tell any of the, the intellectuals that might be listening and are, are, are closing their hearts to this message or closing their minds to this message because they're not allowing their hearts to, to speak to them? How can they begin to grasp what you're saying? Because it's a very simple message, and well, they, sometimes people want the bells and whistles and something just enormous to happen. Well, these you know, intellectual people, people tend to live in the rational mind and not the experiential mind. But I would say that if you prayed to God the simplest possible prayer, said, God, you know, in the name of Jesus, I would like to experience you in my life. I would like to know you or know if you're real. And if they gave that a chance in peace and quiet and sincerity that God would not disappoint them um, so I would challenge them if they consider themselves to be of any um, intellectual integrity or not try it and find out for yourself mm -hmm. because the danger the truth of the danger out there and that's what you experience I think that's what's so powerful is that the devil and the Evil spirits are out there prowling the earth, as we've yeah. read in the Bible. Like a roaring lion. Like a roaring lion. And, and people don't like to believe that, don't like to talk about it, dismiss it as something that's yeah. only in horror it's, movies. It's the, one of the greatest success of the evil one is to convince us all that it's not real. And it's all a big game. And unfortunately, it's too real. And it's something that needs to be taken seriously. I don't like to... Um, I like to fill myself up with the light of Christ. And that takes care of my problem with evil. Mm -hmm. But you bump into it every once in a while, you know, and you've got you to face the reality of it. Even after you've accepted Christ. Yeah. But for those who haven't accepted him yet, they have to be aware that if they haven't accepted him, then they're being led by another force. Absolutely. They don't even know how much he has power over them, you know. It doesn't matter what you've done. God is always willing to take you back. Is that not true? You're like the prodigal son. Right. It's the, the, the incredible thing is, is people, well, I'm too bad, I've done too many wicked things or something like that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I have a man that I'm working with who's on death row in Ohio, mm -hmm. and he did a really bad thing. He don't want to know about it. It's, really, it's the worst thing you can imagine he did. Penis crime, yes. And he has turned to God, and he's received God's forgiveness, and he lives in this horrible, constricted little life, death row trying to be a witness to the other, um, there's 200 men on death row there, to the other men up there. And he has purpose and meaning in his life, although his life is really, really hard. And he'll never get out of there. And he admits his crime and he doesn't want to get out. He doesn't seek a pardon or anything. He just, he, he feels his punishment is justified. But the only way he'll ever get out of there is to die or be executed. But his name is Martin. Martin is right with God and he knows it. Anybody can be right with God. Was it your personal witness to, to Martin that helped him? Because we always are told that the, our it personal had a little, wit... It was a, a little people. We all have our own little role to play. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of us, the Bible says, some of us till, some of us weed, some of us cultivate, some of us nurture. And we don't really need to claim the harvest. You know, just play our part. You know, do you, you know what I mean in terms of the conversion of the sure. And it begins with how you treat the person at the cash register. You treat them like a thing because they feel like a thing. 
You know, if you've ever done um, service work with people, you know, I mean, everybody treats you like you're just, you know, furniture. You bring a little joy and brightness into their life. But it's not always easy, and sometimes maybe your family members won't accept your message readily. No, at, yeah. Um, the odds are really good that they're going to be the first uh, problem you're going to face, and I have too. And what we need to do with our family, uh, I learned this the hard way. The difficult way is you've got to pray and pray and pray for them and turn them over to God because you're the least effective person in terms of converting them. Mm -hmm. um, you need to pray for them and love them, but don't try and convert your family. Let God convert your family. Um, be the right example. Always be willing. Always, you know. But, I mean, I to told my kids, you know, if you don't go to church, you're not going to get any money. And, you know, that doesn't work. Threats, threats and fear don't make it. Only builds resentment. So ultimately, you would tell people out there that God has a very special plan for each and every one of them. But in order to understand their plan, they need to pray for guidance from him. To pray it and to explore it. The way that we find what God wants us to do is with trial and error. Um, God has given me certain um, gifts and abilities mm -hmm. and lots of limitations, lots of places where I'm not gifted and stuff. So I have to learn through trial and error where I should put my energy put my compassion, put my concern, you know, and, and, other, and other things don't get involved with it because I'm not good at it or it's not fruitful for me. You know what I mean? So we explore, but the, the main thing is this is the school of learning how to love, and it's all experiential learning. But it's, a it's not theoretical, it's experiential. But it's a universal message for all people. I know when we were speaking on the phone about yeah. the Jesus Christ issue, and you said something to me, you said, you didn't feel like you needed to ask about that specifically because you understood that if people love God, they love Jesus, and they might not even know they love Jesus yeah. because God is Jesus. Yeah, there's no... Um, there are three revelations of God. God, the Creator, Father, Christ, the Son, who lived as a person called Jesus of Nazareth for, you know, 30-odd years, and the Holy Spirit, but it's... Um, three persona of the same being. Um, and there's, in essence, no difference between any of them. If you had to leave people with one thought, one message, something that, that they could hold on to, you've said so much already, obviously, but just something that, that you want that, to leave them with. That it's, it's very easy, for, um, that God loves you way more than you can possibly imagine. That's what I want people to know. How much, I, I, I can only say it, I can't, they have to find out for themselves, but they're very, very important to God, and God's love for them is just much greater than anything they could ever imagine. Howard Storm's unforgettable account of his near-death experience has taught us many precious lessons, and that death need never be feared by anyone. And it's important to remember that God predestines no one to go to hell. It is our choice. I'm Mary Lou McCall. Thanks for joining me.